is Susan London. I'm at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium talking with Dr. Justin Balco about his study on the genetic profiling of residual triple negative breast cancer after neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Dr. Balco, can you tell us a little bit about your finding? Sure. So the objective of our study was to uh, use molecular analyses, um, really state-of-the-art molecular analyses, to explore what kind of genetic alterations are present in the tumor cells that are left behind after neoadjuvant chemotherapy in breast cancer patients. Um, those patients that have no tumor cells left after neoadjuvant chemotherapy at the time of surgical resection in general have a very good prognosis. However, those patients that have residual disease at surgery, even though that residual disease is removed and surgically resected from the body, those patients actually have a very poor prognosis. And so, unfortunately, we don't have very good targeted treatments or even standard of care treatments um, for those patients. We simply uh, uh, follow up with them and, and, and essentially wait until a recurrence happens and then treat the recurrence as it occurs. Um, so our goal was really to use those molecular analyses to try to identify uh, how and, and, and what types of, of clinical studies could be used in an immediate post-operative setting in those patients to um, try to impact patient recurrence and, and overall survival um, for triple negative breast cancer. Okay, and what might be the clinical implications of your findings down the road? So I, I think that our, our, our findings of the diversity of lesions that were present uh, in that residual disease really um, um, make a statement for using uh, personalized medicine approaches um, and, and molecular analyses, um, for instance, next generation sequencing platforms to try to stratify patients into appropriate adjuvant clinical studies after um, they failed neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Um, I think that our findings, for instance, of amplifications of the JAK2 locus um, may uh, uh, have a, a, a very good um, rationale for uh, looking at, at JAK2 inhibitors which have not been explored in breast cancer um, for this subset of patients and they also provide a biomarker um, for a potential biomarker for, um, for stratification of those patients. Um, I think that there's a, a number of other alterations that we found that are um, even though they're very diverse can be grouped into pathways um, and therefore we can treat a larger number of patients with a single in a single clinical study um, and, and hopefully that, that we'll be able to impact patient survival. Okay. How close are we to applying this clinically and could you speculate on the potential feasibility and cost of doing so? Um, I think that so this was a, a really a, a an exercise in trying to find what those alterations are. Um, as far as application in, in routine clinical practice, we're a little ways away, a, a few years at least. But I think that um, right now what we're ready to do is to sh uh, start the adjuvant clinical studies to try to figure out which of these lesions we can actually target now. Um, and I, I think once those data, once those studies are done and that data is available, um, I think that it'll be immediately ready for clinical um, clinical implications and clinical uh, practice.